In our last video, we were working in InDesign, and we created um, one of three panels in InDesign. Um, now you have three, probably have three letters and three panels. So, in order to create three panels or pages, you would click on the Pages panel, and there are a few ways to create pages. You can just click on the New Page document once or twice for two pages, and you can continue to work out uh, solutions to the design problem assuming you have more than one panel. Um, now I uh, have three panels here, but I'm going to trash these two because I don't have those done yet. And with this being a demonstration, I don't usually fully work out the entire project. Now the next thing we're going to need to do um, in InDesign uh, to prepare for printing, because uh, you might be printing uh, away from your home, you might be printing at the school, you might even choose to print at FedEx or, or Kinko's or Office Max or, or um, o Staples. Well, you'll need to organize your files well. You also need to create PDFs. So we're going to go and package this file to make sure we have everything. Plus, when you turn stuff in, you have to package. So this is not only uh, to prepare for printing, this is to prepare to turn the files in. So to package files, you go to File, and four items from the bottom is package. Now packaging collects your fonts, your links and images, and any other uh, extra things that you're working with. Now when I go to file package it will give you this uh, window, the package window, and what we're looking for is we're looking for any um, triangular signs that are yellow with big uh, red explanation points I believe is what it is. And that means that something you're doing is not proper. Uh, you're not using the software properly, either for um, in in the in the software doing something wrong, or also uh, files might not be prepared be prepared properly for print. Many times you'll see the triangular shape here with an explanation point, and they'll say that a link is missing or it's been modified. Uh, it may say that you're using RGB color space when we're supposed to be using CMYK. So there could be errors here. Um, now what it's going to do, it's definitely going to collect fonts. It tells me which font I use. Uh, it tells me, if I click through, it'll tell me which images are here and so on. But really, summary is, is plain enough. Now when I hit package, it's going to give me, um, uh, well, one, it'll ask me if I haven't saved it lately to save it. and if it had been saved, it would automatically come up with these printing instructions. Now, printing instructions are for commercial printers. If you're sending this out to a commercial printer, this is great to have. If you're sending it to Kinko's, you don't need this. So, we're going to hit continue. If you cancel, it'll cancel the packaging. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to call this sustainable folder or project one folder or whatever project number it is. Uh, but it will call it whatever the name of the file is plus the word folder after it. So the word folder is kind of the dead giveaway for the fact that this has been packaged. It's going to copy the fonts, the link graphics, and it's going to update any links too. So I'm going to hit package. Now it gives me a warning telling me that uh, I need to comply with the copyright law and license agreement for fonts. So this tells you that the fonts that you're using, if we're uh, using something that the school has provided, it tells you that you are not allowed to use the fonts beyond, uh, beyond anything that we're doing for educational purposes. You can't use them for profit. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's copying my fonts and my image and my InDesign file. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this. Actually, i just close it. Because you always need to open the packaged file to make sure it did what it was supposed to do. Okay, so here is the packaged folder. I'm going to open the packaged folder. Then I'm going to open the InDesign file from the package folder. If it has corrupted, it won't open or give you an error. So this opened just fine. Now what I need to do is I am going to save this as a PDF. So I'm going to File, a WPDF preset, high quality print. Now this is uh, because you're going to print this and you want the print to be high quality. Now I will remember that it came from the package folder since I opened the InDesign file from the package folder. 
But when I close out the file and I open the InDesign file to make sure it worked, there we go. Now I'm going to hit save because it's going to save it to that folder. And then you're going to get some options that come up for exporting your Adobe PDF. The general options, uh, we don't really need to change anything here. If you accidentally design things in spread, choose pages. Spreads meaning uh, facing pages. But nothing here really needs to be changed. On compression, nothing needs to be changed. This is all part of the high quality print. These numbers correlate to high quality, uh, the higher pixels per inch, which will give us a higher quality print. The third item is marks and bleeds. This is where we do need to change something. You want to turn crop marks on and you want to make sure the bleed is set at P9 um, all around. Now, if you use document bleed settings, is checked, uncheck it, and then set your bleed. So, in hindsight, looking what we did, we didn't do anything in general. We didn't do anything in compression. All we did was turn crop marks on in the bleed, marks and bleeds, and we set our bleed to P9. You don't need to worry about anything else here. You just need to hit export. So it's exporting the PDF now. Now let's say you're working between uh, old software and new software. Um, now this has nothing to do with a PDF or printing because most of your places don't have, uh, that you're going out to, the Kinko's and Staples don't have the most recent version of InDesign. But let's say you're, you're going between school and home and you need to take uh, and something you've used or created at school, you need to take it home and have it usable. Well, in this case, we would export this as an IDML file. So here I went to File Export. Again, that was File Export. Now, you don't have to do this if you have uh, the same version at home as we have at school. But if you have an older version at home, you would want to go to File Export and save it as an IDML file, which stands for InDesign Markup Language, and you want to hit Save. And in theory, uh, hopefully in practice as well, in theory, this IDML file will open in older versions of InDesign. So if you have an older version of InDesign, export as an IDML file, and hopefully you can open it at home. <clears throat> Bring InDesign back up. Now, let's say t uh, we have another issue that comes up oftentimes in the labs when you try to print from InDesign, and I, I uh, did a printing uh, video or demonstration a couple days ago in class, but let's say we can't get InDesign to print and it gives us a zero line error, I believe it's what it looks like. This is a last ditch resort, <coughs> excuse me, this is a last ditch resort to get your uh, stuff to print. This is assuming you cannot print from InDesign. This is assuming you can't create a PDF. And the InDesign file is just giving you fits. What I will do as a last ditch resort, kind of a plan C kind of thing, is I will go to File and Export. And I will export this as an EPS file. So where it says Format, I can go to EPS. And I will hit Save. And this window, make sure it's a TIFF, make sure it's CMYK, go ahead and make sure the bleed is set at P9. Look at advanced and see if there's anything here. Yes, we want a high resolution. We don't want lower, middle, medium. Um, but I think everything else is going to be fine. If, it's, uh, if you develop things in facing pages, turn on pages, turn off spreads. You don't want spreads on this particular project. Okay, so you hit export. Now this again was a last ditch effort in the event that you cannot print from InDesign or make a PDF. Now here is what you get is an EPS. Now you do not have to do the EPS or the IDML file, okay? These are just for uh, those who have older versions of software or for those who cannot get InDesign to print or make a PDF. Now I would open this in Photoshop. So I'm right clicking and I'm saying open with Photoshop. And I would want to make sure that when I'm rasterizing the EPS, that the inches are correct and the resolution or pixels per inch are correct. 72 is incorrect. We need to change that to 300 pixels per inch. So it's um, an 8 by 8 with the eighth of an inch bleed all around, which makes it 8 and a quarter by 8 and a quarter, 300 pixels per inch, and CMYK. Now, if you do not want the edges of your type, 
to get fuzzy. This is why we don't do a lot of things in Photoshop, is because when we print, it makes the anti-alias the edges. The anti-aliasing creates a um, middle pixel color between the item and the background. So we want to turn anti-alias off. We want our type to be sharp. So I'll hit OK. And now I can use this to print uh, from through Photoshop. Okay, so I will save it as a TIFF or as a PSD, either one. And it's ready to go as a backup for uh, in the event that I cannot print from InDesign. So that's strictly a backup. So I'm going to create a folder in here, a new folder, and I'm going to call it Backup. Backup uh, or plan, I'll call it or plan B and C. Okay, so that's where I'm going to put my IDML file. Now you guys don't have to have this if you, everything's working properly and you don't have old software. I'm also going to put my EPS file in there. There we go. But everything else stays right here. Okay? So um, I've, I'm pretty much ready to turn the project in at this point and certainly ready to print. The cool thing is, is if I if I do all of this backup with Plan B and C stuff at home, it takes just a couple of minutes. Uh, if I get to school and I'm uh, having a hard time loading my fonts, um, I can either open my PDF, that's the best thing, and print from it. But if it doesn't act right, I always check my PDFs. Yep, they're good. Plus it has a crop marks. Okay, it has crop marks all the way around. But if this, if my InDesign could not create a PDF or my PDF doesn't work, I have my plan B and C ready to go. Okay? So this concludes how to package your files and prepare them to print. Have a, uh, you can print right from InDesign if it's working, but if you're printing from uh, Kinko's, FedEx, uh, Office Max Staples, they want you to provide a PDF. If you just want to make sure that you have extra files ready in the event that things don't work out, you can have the EPS file that you can print on or print from. And the IDML file, again, was there if you're going between uh, a newer software and an older software. Okay? So some of this is excessive, but not if you're trying to have a plan A, plan B, and plan C. Okay, so that concludes getting your stuff ready, packaging it, and ready to print.